This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the final lecture on pricing, and uh, it's just hopefully a fairly short chat, no more arithmetic, but it's uh, what's on the last page of the notes, pricing strategies, and you'll see I've started to write them up to save time. Uh, but I need to explain what we mean by a pricing strategy and what these different types are. And to explain what they are, well, in fact, it's the first one. I think all of you have probably seen that the situation where you go uh, to the supermarket and perhaps there's a, a product on special offer at deliberately a low price. It very often applies to new products. You know, maybe I start making chocolates. Nobody's going to buy my chocolate because they don't know anything about it. So I might deliberately charge a much lower price than the competition just to make sure they try my chocolates and then of course hopefully they like it and I'll put the price up and start making profits. Well that's an example of a strategy fixing a price for special reasons not basing it on cost and whatever but a specific strategy for specific reasons. And as I say, that was penetration pricing where you charge a low price to gain market share uh, but always with the intention of raising the price later. I think that's an affair, I hope that makes sense. Next one, price skimming. Before I write down, um, not really a definition, but an explanation, let me give you an example. I remember when flat screen TVs first came in. Now, I'm, I'm pausing because I can't remember how long ago it was, you know, whether you were a I'm so old, whether you would actually remember this. Uh, but it was certainly the case, you know, in the days when um, there's big TVs with tubes, the first flat screen TVs were incredibly expensive. <coughs> $10,000 or more. But gradually over time, the price has fallen. And so although, you know, very few people could afford them at the beginning, now they fall into a price where most people can afford them and there's a big market for them. But why is the price fallen? You know, why a TV that might have cost $10,000 uh, 20 years ago now only costs $500? Why has the price come down so much? Well, the obvious answer is, oh, they're producing more, so cheaper to produce. But no, there's more to it. The main reason is they could have charged 500 from the beginning and everybody would have bought them, but they knew there are always some rich people who are prepared to pay a high price because they're the first to get them, it's a new product. And so they deliberately say, right, let's start at 10,000. We won't sell many, but some people will pay 10,000. When they bought one, we'll drop the price. Let's drop it to 9,000. And some people a little bit less rich will want to buy it. Let's drop it to 5,000, more people buy it, and so on. So eventually it comes down to 500, and everybody's buying, buying one. But everybody's paid the most they could afford, in a sense. So although it's taking the company longer to um, sell to everyone, it's taking them longer, but again, everybody's been paying as much as they can afford to pay. And it always happens with new technology, always. Whenever anything new is invented like that, there tends to be a high price at the beginning and it falls. These days it tends to fall quite rapidly. People know what's going to happen. And it's only certain products. You know, you couldn't do that really with coffee. It doesn't work. But uh, that's what price skimming is. It's where you charge a high price initially 
that first and reduce it over time. Uh, and as I say, um, it only works really um, with high tech products, technology. Um, that's where you most see it. Uh, next one, product line pricing. This is an easy one to, to explain. Think about cars. You think about a particular model of a car, uh, a BMW 323 or something. Generally, there are several different versions available. There's perhaps a, a very luxurious one with leather seats, and there's a very simple one with a smaller engine and so on. So essentially the same car, the same shape, most things are the same, but some are quite basic with not many extra features. Some have all sorts of extra features and special wheels and so on. And of course, they're different prices. Well, that's product line pricing. Different versions of the same product. at different prices. And it's, think about it, it's quite a good idea. You see, if they only sold one version, that's all anybody could buy. But they know uh, some people are richer and can afford uh, to pay more. Other people can't afford to pay more. So how do you make a product which you know, everybody can afford. You make different versions of it. A cheap version of it, an expensive version of it. Uh, rather than just setting one price for one product, which is cheap for some people, is too expensive for others. Uh, nearly there. Next one, complementary products. Uh, here, I'll give you by example. Think about razors. Uh, not electric, the, the scrape ones. Uh, these days, uh, the razor, you've got a holder and the blades clip in a cartridge. So essentially, the two different products, you know, there's the holder, you need that holder, and then you keep needing to buy the cartridges, the blades. Well, Gillette and the others, the holder itself, they sell very cheap. Sometimes it's even free. They lose money on the holder. And why are they prepared to sell that very cheap? It's because if you buy their holder, you have to buy their blades. And their blades is where they make the money. They're more expensive. Now that's what complementary products are. Where one product is so cheap, maybe loss making, but because you're then forced to buy another product that goes with it, which makes a big profit. Now, it's a bit difficult to write that down in words and put e.g. raises the holder and the blades. But again, I hope that made sense. Uh, price discrimination, and I'll write this down first and then give you a couple of examples after. It's where you, it's where you sell the same product to different markets at different prices. I'll give you two examples. Uh, one is, you'll see, geographic. Suppose I'm producing, uh, I'm producing coffee. Maybe, don't take these figures down, but maybe it costs me $5 to make it. 
a jar of coffee. It means you a lot, you don't know how big the jar is. Cost me five dollars to make it. And I want to decide on a selling price. I wish I wanted to charge as much as I can that people are prepared to pay and so on. And maybe in Europe, I've decided people can afford to pay ten dollars a jar. And that's the selling price. I'm also going to sell it though in um, Africa. And depending on which country, uh, the problem there could be uh, that people aren't earning as much in uh, the particular country. Nobody's going to buy it if I charge ten dollars. And so I'll, I'll say to, to them, well, anything more than five is making a profit. And so perhaps in that country, I only charge six. So I'm charging people what they can afford. If Europe can pay ten, charge ten, make a, a big profit. If Africa six, charge six. Smaller profit. Very sensible. Uh, and that does happen. And that's geographical. You're selling the same product, but at different prices in different markets. I'll give you just one more um, example, completely different. Um, think about ticket prices on the buses. Don't know about your country, but in most countries, uh, children are cheaper. You know, maybe adults, maybe the ticket price is five dollars, maybe for children, it's two dollars. I don't know, it's different in different countries. You know, others it might be if they're old, they pay less. But why are they charging different prices? I'm not talking about tiny little children, I'm talking about great big children. They still take up a seat. It's the same seat, whether you're an adult or a child, the same product. Why are some only paying two and some are paying five? Now, obviously, there can be some social side to it, but so in the UK, the buses are privately owned. Parents want to make money, and the reason they do it, they know adults can afford to pay five. And if they charge everybody five, then there wouldn't be enough people to fill the bus. Children couldn't afford it, so there'd be empty seats. So they want to fill the empty seats. How can we fill the empty seats? We'll have to charge less. But we don't want to charge adults less. If they can afford to pay five, we'll charge five. Ah, we'll invent a rule. We'll invent a rule. We'll say, right, if you're under 15, you only pay two. And that way, they can hopefully fill the bus. Adults can afford five and pay five. Children can only afford two and pay two. It's better to have a full bus than some seats empty. So exactly the same idea, same product sold at different prices. Uh, finally, the one I need to say least of all about, uh, volume discounting. It means exactly what it says. Um, you give a discount uh, for uh, large quantities. Uh, sell something, sell toilet rolls or something at um, 50 cents each. If you buy a pack of 20 toilet rolls, ah, they'll only be 40 cents each. Perhaps that was a bad example. Um, we've got cats. So often the supermarket will say, ah, the cat food, 50 cents a packet. But if you buy three, 40 cents a packet. Discount for large quantities. All right, that's that for pricing. As always, go back through any of the um, these lectures that you're not clear about. Otherwise, have a go at the um, the online practice test. <laughs>